Yo. My eyeballs. Mm, Lash, you gotta stay on. We got to do a video. Oh, Lash, you gotta stay Hey y'all, hey, it's time for another video today. So, guess what? We back with a DIY. Yes, come on, easy DIY out there. No pattern. If you can cut a square, follow instructions, and let's see, cut a square, follow Oh, you, you kind of got to know how to sew for this one and use a safety pin because I don't because I poked myself. Uh, if you can do those things, then you could make this. So, this is actually a reversible cap um a surgical cap i had a customer that asked me she had been asking me to make them and i was like i don't know how to do it she was like we well, can figure it out and i was like i mean you're right i can so i figured it out so i'm going to show you guys i just i made this one you'll see this one i also made another design because she actually wanted one with the band so i did do one with the band and then this one is longer because this one even though you can't put your little long hair in because of the elastic, this one gives you more room. So if you have braids, locks, anything like that, this gives you that. I did, like I said, I added the band. And this band can be customized like I do my other, like my mask where I put something on it. So this could say nurse, whatever. Like you, the listen, the options are endless. They are satin on the inside. Because let me tell you something. Look, I know I got a lot of different races following me. But let me tell you something. Black folk... We can't do cotton on our hair. We can't because some happens it dries out our hair. So these are actually lined with uh, satin. So the one I have on is lined as well. And then I also made the straps thicker and longer than this one. So I will be showing you guys how to do both in this video. I'm going to keep this short. Now I'm going to show you guys like if you did want to reverse it, you are able to. Re oh, don't act like y'all ain't over that deep conditioning while you in the quarantine. Don't do that. Don't do that. Anyway, so if you wanted to flip it for whatever reason, because you know what, you're just feeling froggy and you want to leap, you can. This, Like I say, it is 100% reversible. So we can put that right back on there like that. And then, guess what? You can even flip it. If you just want to stun on them, people. Okay, I was about to say something else, but you know. So you could still... I don't have time to adjust my camera because I'm trying to keep this short. Look, whatever. That ain't whatever so you could do it like this give yourself a pop of color you can also so take it let me come this way and if you like did have like long hair and you wanted to just kind of do it like in a bun oh my god do it you can kind of do it like this you know and kind of make like ponytail i hope this in the camera oh, okay it is like you can do it like this Make people think you got some hair back there if you don't like me. So yeah, you can do it like this and you could still have that same look. Bring this down or you can even wrap it. Look, there's endless opportunities for this hat. You can even do it like that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I'm about to go do surgery. I'm about to go cut some shit in it up. <laughs> anyway, if you're interested in seeing how I made these easy bonnets, no pattern. Oh, excuse me. Surgical bonnets. No pattern. Keep watching. Also, this is a good alternative to you women that like to go into Walmart with just your regular bonnet. This is such a better option. It's, it's just really a better option. Anyway, before I forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, click that doggone subscription button. It's free. They, for a limited time, it's free. And, of course, put on your notifications. Remember, guys, I only put on a bra for y'all. So, I appreciate y'all. All right, let's get to the deep how I. All right, so you'll need your basic fabric that's going to be for the actual bonnet. You will need a fabric for the brim part, and you will need a different fabric that you want to use for the string. You can use the same one. It doesn't matter. This is reversible, so if you don't want to put the satin on the inside, instead of the satin fabric, this is where you'll need uh, another. So you'll need two big pieces of fabric instead of the lining. Does that make sense? Instead of the satin, okay? Okay. So I'm actually going to be writing down my measurements and every once in a while I will zoom in for you so you can see. And this is a good time to pause just to see these measurements. Because this bonnet is bigger, this one is going to be 22 inches. That's that way. And then I believe I did 25. Yes. So it's 22 by 25. For the one I had on, that one was 22 by 22. Okay. So that is the measurements. Period, point blank, amen. Now, if you want this longer 
this that 25 is what you would make uh longer if you wanted it longer than 25 but i don't think you're gonna need it any longer so because this is the brim of it you would want that to also be the 22. i'm going to slow this down because i ain't gonna be able to talk this fast this long shoot so the idea is to put those right sides together and you're going to be sewing just along that line okay that's showing you that it is indeed 22, which means I need to cut off all this extra fabric. I'm going to use that for like a tie or something, for sure. I realize I had to sew this video down just a little bit. So we are going to be ironing the uh, seam open. And this just creates that neatness. So when this goes across your forehead, it will just lay better. I told you guys before, ironing is a part of sewing. I didn't think it was, but as time went on, I was like, ah, oh, okay. That's why we iron everything. So at times I will speed this video up just because I want to keep it short as short as possible. But I don't know why I decided at all times to stop it slow on the ironing part. Y'all like my little new iron? The other one died, y'all. I got I, I to gotta show y'all the video for that. So the entire length, which this is what the lining will be, is 27.5. And then the width for you guys is the, zoom in for me, I can't see, 22. Instead of this satin fabric, you would, of course, use another fabric if you wanted it to be reversible. So this is showing that this is 22 inches wide because that is the same length as my other piece. So this is for your actual straps, and this is the thicker one. So I do have the fabric folded long ways. So each strap will be 30 inches long and about 6 inches wide. So that'll give you, so when you fold that, you'll still have that thickness. So basically, once you fold it, It'll come into what three inches? Is that right? I don't do well with math, folks. I don't. But this is like this. I did the index card on purpose so you guys can pause just to see all my measurements, just in case this video is moving a little bit too fast for you guys. I was just trying to make it a little bit shorter, but I, I think I'm gonna have to slow this down because she making me have anxiety. So okay, that's showing you. And then what you'll do is simply cut it to make two straps. So now you have both. This is one of the reasons why I actually do it on the fold is because, bam, it already has like a crease, so you know exactly where to cut. And this does not have to be perfect, guys. Like, that's what I love about this DIY. So now you'll fold this right sides together. I just wish my camera would focus. I'm focused, so why are you not focused, camera? Oh, my gosh. Are you drunk? Did you have a long night, camera? <laughs> All right, guys, so like I said, you'll fold these right sides together. Now, the idea is that you're about to create your straps and we'll end up folding these out and I'll show you that in just a second. Whenever you're ready, lady, and your elastic needs to be about eight inches. I understand that elastic is hard to find right now, but you're able to use any size elastic. Of course, the thinner, the better, only because that, remember, you have to have that sitting on your neck. And if you use a too thick elastic, it'll probably start to roll. So that's something to keep in mind. A lot of the stores are starting to restock on elastic. So even check Amazon. I'll put the link down below. So, All right, so now you'll take this and sew it all the way around. You'll keep that side open because that is how you're going to flip it. So you sew there and all the way down, all right? And you stop right there. So this is just showing the yellow one. I just want to show you guys really quick the measurements for that one. So the smaller one is six. It's still about five and a half, actually. Okay, girl, you're you doing your sign language. So it's about five and a half inches wide for the entire straps. And then the length of it... Come on, show me the length, lady. Anytime you ready. Anytime you ready. God, dog, now when I need it to go fast, it's 45, okay? So remember, the other one is about 60, because remember, we did 30 and 30. So this entire thing is 45. That shows you the difference. And then, of course, the, length, the width is still 60. So those are the three for that one. Okay, so no matter the length, this will still be the same process. You'll cut them down the middle, and then you'll put right sides together as you did the other, and you would do the same sewing as you would sew up and down. So you would just do an L in sewing, okay? So once those are done, this is what I'm going to show you. You will cut the corner of it, just small little snip and snip. And that will give you that little round, cute little edge. Plus, it makes it so much easier to flip inside out. Now, when you're flipping these inside out, I actually just take my thumb, push it all the way down on my thumb, and then I simply push it in. I make sure those ends are right and bam, you flip it out. That is the easiest way for me. Whatever works for you, hey, by all means do it. So now I'm showing you how those edges where I cut are nice and firm. 
Of course, take this to your little cute mini iron and iron the link below for the iron. So now we're gonna take those two pieces of elastic and we're simply putting those in that raw edge in. And what you'll do is simply sew right along those lines. I wanna take a quick moment to apologize uh, to you guys because if you notice, I'm using more of the Aztec print that I did not have on my head. And that is simply because a lot of this footage was on my phone and trying to air drop it. It didn't want to be air dropped, y'all. So I was like, you know what? Forget it. I'm doing the same thing with them. So that is why I'm telling you guys the measurements of it. So this, we're back to the red. Uh, I'm going to call this one the red and brown. So now you'll put right sides together. And we will be sewing this. But I'm going to show you guys a couple of pieces. So again, right sides together. If you do have two different fabrics, this is a time that you will want to put them together. Because I have satin, it really didn't matter. All right, so at this point, you're going to go over an inch and a half, make a mark, go over just a little bit, make another mark. Now, what you're doing here is creating those spaces, and I'll explain that. So I just did, like, you, it doesn't matter how much. Take your hand, because you'll be wanting to, you'll want to use this to be able to put your hand in there to flip it back around. Make another mark whenever you're ready to. Mm-hmm, yeah, right there, sis and then you'll sew along. So the idea is that you will start at that first pin. Hello, Look, what's she looking at y'all? Oh, she is me, okay. So you'll start there and sew. Sew to the first pin, skip over, right there, uh-huh. Yeah, we got it, girl, skip over, right. And then we're gonna sew all the way to that pin and we will stop right there. This will make sense on why we're sewing like this in just a moment. So now we're gonna fold this over and now we're gonna create that subtle curve that's at the end. You can make this six inches or eight. I'm gonna be honest, I eyeballed that sucker and I was like, you know what? That looked real good. And look y'all, now we have the curve that goes at the end of the surgical bonnet. <laughs> Come on curve, what's up curve, what's up? Why do I keep flipping that thing over? All right, so at this point, you will now want to sew all the way around the edge of this. Now, if you have a serger, you can totally use a serger at this point. Once that's done, you will iron this and then flip it right side out. This shows why you needed that space for your hand because it just makes better sense. Don't worry about those holes. They will, you will see what we're doing with those at the end. But this makes total sense on why uh, I said to use your hand length because it's so much easier for you to get in there and be able to really just push out at those corners. So when you start to iron this, it is nice and smooth. So I believe at this point, we're going to take it back to the iron. I'm so delirious. Yep. Yep. We back at the iron. What's up, little mini? So you just iron this. Again, I am a advocate about ironing because it just makes everything look so much neater and so much crisp. So take a moment, iron that. And then remember that little opening at the brim? You're going to iron that close. Also, if you have directional fabric, guys, make sure that where that brim is, you're using that so your fabric ain't upside down. All right? Now that she's all ironed and pretty, what you'll do is go over about an inch or an inch and a half, whichever one, it's better for you. It doesn't matter. And you will sew all the way around. Now we're creating the actual casing which is where your string will go. Get your trusty safety pin. Come on, camera, what's up, partner? Put that on the edge, y'all. Make sure that's in there because once you get in there and you're going around, I would hate for you to lose this little piece. That would be so bad and so terrible. Now, if you got another tool that's easier to help you get through there, by all means, use it. But I just have a safety pin for now because everything else is sold out. But you will simply just work that string, your tie, like all the way around that casing that you made. And I don't know if you can see at the top of this, but you can see the little brim of the string. So all you're doing when we just did the sew all the way around, that was an inch. You're making the casing for this. I know I just said that, but I had to say it again just so y'all clean. You know what's up? Okay, what's happening? She's still working, y'all, because it takes a second, but it'll make sense once I finally come out the end. Just whenever you ready to. Okay, and I, and I fast forward this video and it's still taking me a long time. So y'all, I'm just warning y'all, don't get to, you know, being tired and say I'm over it. So now you'll pull it all the way through until you see that elastic. So all you need for the elastic, seriously guys, is eight inches because it's literally just going at the nape, at, you know, at the back of your neck. So now what you'll do is straighten it out 
and pin it so the elastic stays on the inside. Once you have that pinned, well, okay, I, say, I said once you have that pinned, uh, okay, yeah, now you're going to take it and we're going to simply sew from here all the way around to the other edge. Okay, now you'll cut all your string off because that's what you're supposed to do. And y'all, your bonnet, look at that, flipped it inside out. And she pretty much done. I mean, all you got to do if you want to iron it again, you can. But that shows where you can flip it to the satin side and you have that red brim. Now, keep in mind, if you do plan to flip this, you can't put anything on, you know, you can't put any text on there. So something to keep in mind. And there you guys have it. There is your bonnet. 